Hi, today I'm going to present you a complicated topic. I'm going to talk about ontologies in GIS. I will uh, start by uh, giving some definitions of what an ontology is, then uh, we'll see why we need to develop ontologies and how we, we use them and how they are related to GIS. It's a, ontology is a philosophical term that refers to the subject of existence. The Greek philosopher Aristotle during his time referred to uh, the science of being in the capacity of being. Uh, that science studied the general properties of everything that exists. It was later known as ontology. In information system, an ontology is the definition of a set of concepts and their interrelationships. This definition is really relevant and important to us. It is also defined as a specification of conceptualization. Conceptualization is an abstract, simplified view of the world that we wish to represent for some purpose. That specification is also used for making what we call an ontological commitment that we can describe as a common language used by computer agents to make it easier for them to communicate, to exchange information, to create a new knowledge. We have here a very simplified model of what an ontology can be. On the left side we have a uh, a set of concepts and on the right side we have another set of concepts. Those two, these two set of concepts are linked up with uh, an arrow that we can see on the top. People is linked up to uh, countries. That arrow represents the interrelationship between the interrelationship between the two concepts and the whole thing is an ontology. Now the point of interrelating two concepts of creating an ontology is to create a new knowledge that will be shared between computer agents through an ontological commitment. As we said before it's a, a mode of communication agreed between agents. The point here is that if several websites contain geographical information and share and publish the same underlying ontology of the terms they all use, then the computer agents can just extract and aggregate information for these different sites. It will also help enabling the reuse of domain knowledge. For example, if many different domains need to represent the notion of time, this representation includes the notions of time intervals, points in time, relative measures of time and so on. If one group of researchers develops such an ontology in detail, others can simply reuse, can simply reuse it for their domains. Additionally, if we need to build a large ontology, we can integrate several existing ontologies describing portions of the large domain. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation. If you have uh, questions or if you need more explanations, uh, just feel free to leave me a message and I'll be glad to reply to back to you. Thank you. Bye-bye.